Hello and welcome to how to read your breath. In this video, you're going to learn two different breathing techniques that are going to allow you to measure the way your body is breathing. A lot of people think breathing is just breathing. You don't have to think about it. Your body just does it for you. And thankfully for most of us, our body just allows us to go about whatever we need to. So we don't have to think about the quality or consistency or habits and patterns of our breath but you'd be really amiss to think that your breath doesn't directly influence your energy, your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, and overall the way you act and behave throughout the world. Think about any time you've watched an elite athlete at the top of their game or in a really deep endurance sport, noticing the way their body's breathing. Or if you've ever watched a kid who's throwing a temper tantrum, the way their body's breathing, or somebody who's having a panic attack in the way their body is breathing. All of these different breathing patterns are going to affect your neurochemistry, which directly affect the way you think and feel, and eventually how you behave. So it's really important to pay attention to your breath. These breathing techniques that come in this video are straight out of breath technique training, which is breath guidance signature online training. It's where you learn 60 different breathing techniques in six weeks. It's all online, you get lifetime access to it, and you get to breathe with a bunch of other breathers all around the world. Make sure if you're really interested in learning how to read your breath that you check out the link in the description below. All right, so I'm Danny May, and this is going to be a very interesting way to assess how your body's breathing. The first is simply to just measure your inhalation time and measure your exhalation time. Many of us have a primary phase of breathing that we feel more comfortable in. A lot of people will say, oh, like I can inhale a lot, but I can't exhale a lot. And other people will say, oh my gosh, I could exhale forever, but I feel like I can't get a breath in. So know that you might feel like you already know which one is gonna be longer, but you also might be surprised. So, and know that those times also change throughout the day. So if you have a stopwatch, go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna do this one with you today, just so you can see how I measure mine. And this is gonna be done all in and out through the nose. And this isn't, um, we're not trying to extend it forcefully, we're just trying to get a measure of how comfortably we can breathe in, how comfortably we can breathe out, and what and how long that takes. All right, so wherever you are, you're gonna give yourself a reset breath. Use your lips, blow all the breath out. We use your nose, breathe it all the way back in. Just release a little sigh. Press your stopwatch, start to breathe in. I got 5.7 seconds. Go ahead and let that breath go. Now take another breath in. Start your stopwatch, start to time it. So I got 7.5. So my exhale is a lot longer or a little bit longer than my inhalation. Now, mind you, if I was working on it with an intentional lengthening, I could definitely breathe in a lot longer and I could definitely breathe out a lot longer. But this is just a measurement of how well your body is breathing in and how long that's taking and how long your exhale is taking. So before we assess what this means, we're gonna go into the second technique of measurement, and that's gonna be your nasal dominance. So we all have a nasal dominance cycle or a nasal cycle that switches if you're breathing in more through your right nostril or if you're breathing in more through your left nostril. So the easiest way to test this is just to close one nostril, breathe in, close the other nostril, breathe in, close one nostril, breathe out, close the other nostril, breathe out to really see which one feels more open or which one might feel more clogged. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer, if you have a deviated septum, this is obviously probably gonna be a little um, different or skewed for you because you'll primarily have one side that's always gonna be more open than the other, but let's go ahead and see what yours is today. All right, so all you're gonna do is blow all the breath out, close your left nostril, breathe in through your right, close your right nostril, breathe in through your left, Close your left nostril, breathe out from your right. Close your right nostril, breathe out from your left. So let's do that one more time. Just close the left nostril, breathe in through just the right. 
And then keep that open, just breathe out. And then switch, breathe it. And then breathe out. So I don't know if you can hear it from me, but this nostril is much more closed than this one. And you want to make sure that this is something that changes throughout the day and everybody's nasal cycle is a little different, but you can notice that if your exhale is longer and your left nostril is more open, that there's a really good chance that you are going to be in a state where you have a little more energy and you're going a little quicker and it might be a good time during the day to um, work out or get work done or homework done or go into that meeting. Now, if your inhale is a little bit longer and your right nostril is a little more open, it might be a good time to take a rest or maybe take a nap or listen to an audiobook or just get a massage or take a bath or I don't know, whatever it looks like for you to like downshift your nervous system. Now, this could be different for you. We go really deep into the philosophy of why this is in breath technique training. So I really hope that you'll check that out if you're interested in learning more. But during different philosophies and the way your nervous system is operating, you have through your autonomic nervous system branches, your sympathetic and your parasympathetic. And your body's constantly switching in between these different modes. Modes. So if you are a little more heightened and you're ready to go and tackle something, you are turning on your sympathetic. If you're a little more fatigued, lethargic, a little more low energy, maybe you rest and digesting, you're going to be in your parasympathetic. And the cool thing is, is that you can actually use your breathing, different breathing techniques and patterns and habits to switch yourself manually into either parasympathetic or sympathetic. So it's really helpful if you're lethargic and you're not feeling great, but you have to go and do this thing to use a breathing technique to switch yourself into that sympathetic state or vice versa. If you're in the middle of a panic attack, nobody wants to be in that heightened sympathetic state that's a little out of control. You can downshift yourself into a parasympathetic sympathetic state. So again, if you want to learn more, please check out breath technique training from breathguidance.com. And if you have any questions about these techniques or breath technique training in general, pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. I sincerely hope that I'll see you around breath guidance soon and breathe with you even sooner. Bye.